What's up, yo? Afternoon, everybody. We got the wireless mics again. Who would like to ask Aaron a question? Kenny. Aaron, are you uh, aware of Jim Crane's comment that he does not believe uh, stealing signs necessarily impacts games? And, right. and do you have any thoughts on that? Look, it, I mean, I think that's 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 quite a stretch. I think um, you know clearly on what level did it impact things? You know, I guess we'll never know, and, and that's for people to draw their own conclusions on, but. I think clearly when we're talking about some of the things that that went on, those those things have an effect on 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 games. Clearly, fellow post writer Dan Martin. All right, now AJ Hinch uh, released another statement last night, kind of clarifying his statement about the buzzers that he wasn't aware of anything, and then Correa today, right, uh, said pretty forcefully said they didn't use anything. Does yeah. that change anything that you think about what happened in last year's ALCS? Um. <clears throat> not really. I mean, it, you know, it, it, it at least feels like, you know, there's a lot of coincidental things and a lot of smoke. And, um, but can I say one way or the other what went on? Absolutely not. So, you know, the, the question that was asked to me was, am I sure not? And my answer was no. And I don't, I, at this point, it's hard to, I think, be certain of, of, of particular things. So, um, you know, a lot of coincidental coincidental things went on that that certainly, from my standpoint, you know, over the last several weeks, you know, have made me think a lot about it. And you know, I draw a lot of different conclusions, but in the end, I don't really know either. You're talking about the explanations, sure, from the different guys, sure. They, you know, they seem overall pretty vague. Buster. Just with Crane's comment being the context for the question, yeah. someone who spent a lifetime in baseball, how much of an advantage, uh, potentially how much of an impact, to use his word, could it be to if the hitters know what pitch is coming in the middle of the game? Um, if I know what's coming as a hitter, it's, it's hard to put a how, how big of an advantage that is. But it's if everyone in – you asked every hitter if they knew 100% certainty what's coming. Uh, I feel pretty, pretty, pretty good about my chances, or, or certainly a lot better. You know, it's why I, us and every team is always working to try and gain an advantage if we can spot something within a team that, you know, allows us to have a really good idea what's what's coming. Um, that's that's a comfortable feeling for a hitter. Kenny. Aaron, uh, Garrett was on the 2018 Astros, not mm -hmm. the 17 Astros. He's a, he's a pitcher, obviously, not right. not a hitter. But, I mean, there's so much anger and, and tension out, out there about this issue. Do you think, is there any bridge for him to cross just because of his association with the Astros, just, just to fully integrate himself with you guys here? I, I absolutely think there's that bridge. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of the things, obviously, that we're talking about are, are clearly – 2017 things when you know in the last couple of years more rules have been in place um you know and and i think pitchers overall are a little different when it comes to some of the things we're talking about um so yeah i think there's that bridge i'm sorry just to clarify so you, you think he does have to kind of make cross no I, th I think he, that bridge to, is, to the contrary okay he's he's crossed he's crossed the bridge yeah. <laughs> James over to the left. <laughs> yeah, just to follow up with that, like, did because did, I, I know that you guys met with him and signed him before the yeah. commissioner's report came out. Did he like feel the need to talk about that stuff with you, bring it up, and and not even just like being being a pitcher, being part of not part of it, but like mm -hmm. seeing maybe something go wrong that he should have spoken up. I know some people apologize. No, no, that more than none of that um, came up or or has come up, and I don't think it it's necessary that that it needs to. You know, I think, you know, he was there after a lot of the, the specific things that we know were going on. So, um, no, I'm, I, I don't I don't view it as anything we've we've got to address with, with Garrett. Dan. 
given Crane's uh, less than forthright explanation of what happened, he, you know, they, they've made changes uh, to their management, but he's still the one in charge. Right. Do you do you think that that's in the past now, or are you still concerned because he's the one uh, yeah. in charge and he hasn't really said anything? You know, that's that's now for them to deal with, and and obviously that's going to be judged by a lot of different people. And, you know, at some point here very shortly, you know, I'm, I'm not even going to address it anymore. I'm, I'm really focused on as we started today, um, you know, the first full day of pitchers and catchers, it's like that's my focus. And I'm kind of past and over this stuff. Um, there's going to be people that draw their own conclusions, speculate, um, have opinions, make judgments. You know, that's for everyone to personally do now. Um, I don't really – you know, one way or the other, care what's in place. I, I do feel like the game has done a good job, and and um, with you know s the heavy hand that has happened, I, I do feel like it'll positively impact our game more moving forward, and, and the fairness of our game moving forward. Bruce to the left. So how would you assess the first day overall and what you were trying to accomplish and just to see this group all together? Yeah, it's 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 an exciting day. You know, um, we have obviously big expectations. Um, and, you know, we, we embrace those expectations. You, you know, we look forward to the long process now of, of trying to chase a championship. Um, and, but those foundational pieces – start to really get laid in earnest today. And, um, you know, it's good to see guys as a group, as a team on the backfield, um, you know, working on, on their defensive things and the pitcher's fielding practice, to see a number of guys throwing their first pens. Um, you know, for me, getting my eyes on some of our young guys for the first time uh, in a bullpen session um, is, is frankly exciting. And, um you know, I got a good glimpse of why we're so excited today from, you know, a lot of our guys that um, I felt like had a really good first day. Sweeney to the left. Aaron, one of the things that Gary Sanchez said yesterday was that you guys went through a great deal of things last year to conceal your signs. Mm -hmm. And when things, you know, when pitches still got hit, he was more like, you know, what more do you have to do? Now that all this has come to light, mm -hmm. how does it impact the whatever system you guys are employing to go through your signs and conceal them? Well, I, I mean, I, I think you, you, we're still going to be guarded and, and vigilant, and, you know, we try to, you know, kind of control our house and, you know, monitor our, you know, pitchers as far as any tipping things that are going on. Um you know, the way we sequence our signs, the system we use in make, making changes to our signs. Um, you know, I don't think much changes in that regard because it's something that's a priority and something that we um, are very vigilant about already. Um, you know, hopefully some of the, you know, illegal things that may have been going on over the course of the last few seasons get cleaned up to a degree. And, uh, and and ultimately, hopefully, we can solve things between the lines. I think, like everyone would would like. Ryan, Aaron, your thoughts on Major League Baseball's new reliever rule, having to face the minimum of three batters, and how much different will it be managing under those new rules when it comes to strategy during games? Um, you know, for us, it's I don't think much changes. Um, especially during the regular season, you know, and, and I've addressed this with some of you, you know, I don't like to use especially our high leverage guys that, you know, when they get up and get in, um, you know, because we don't typically pitch our guys, you know, three days in a row, four out of five days, very often, those kind of things. When I get a guy up and in, unless it's a, a unique situation, I'm not doing that a lot during the regular season for a hitter. Um, and most of our pitchers, um, especially our relievers, have a skill set that's more designed to get out both handed anyway. So I feel like we're um, probably more so than most clubs um, equipped to transition to this rule seamlessly. 
Um, and I don't expect it to have a, a huge effect. I mean, there's going to be a game that comes up when it's not ideal, when you'd like to, you know, a, a guy's finishing off an inning and you'd like to have him out of there after a bat or two. And, but, but that's something that we're all going to have to deal with. But um, overall, I feel like it's something that hopefully should benefit us a little bit. Uh, Andy, do you have a hand up? Just following up on that, in the postseason especially, you do use those uh, mm -hmm. kind of narrow lanes to put relievers in. Yeah. Do you think that will have to impact the way the Yankees as an organization look at bullpen use, uh, especially in a big I mean, postseason you were doing that a lot with guys like Adovino? Yeah, but still, I mean, you just got to make that bit of an adjustment, you know, with the idea that, you know, guys in and – Everyone's dealing with the same set of rules. So um, I don't think it'll be that big of an adjustment, especially hopefully if we're talking about a playoff scenario. We've we've spent a year under those rules. You know, we know the situations that um, I want to bring a guy in and, and put him in a lane that he can be successful. Um, I, I don't see it as being something that's this major adjustment, frankly. James to the left. I don't know if you've been asked this, but uh, you, you saw MLB's proposal about like expanding the playoffs, and I'm just yeah. curious, like what you thought of it going to 14 teams, if, if that happens, and yeah. re, you know, like picking your opponent and, and the idea of expanding the field. I guess. Right. <laughs> it, it's interesting. Um, not to ride the fence on you too much, but I, I'm not sure exactly what I, I, I'm open to. It. I'm open to. You know, I, I think go back to the. You know, course of history. I, I think a lot of people balked initially at the first wild card, and then the second wild card. And you know, I think it is important to protect the integrity of our season because the 162 is is so meaningful. And um, you know, our sport more than others, you gotta. It's special to get to the postseason. Um, so if there's some way to continue to reward teams that that have an excellent regular season um i'm open to that and and i think you know sometimes we got to be reluctant to 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 move a little bit sometimes in our sport anyone else bruce last one chapman accepted responsibility for throwing that pitch to altuve what do you what do you think of your players essentially taking the high road on that type of thing? Um, I think our guys do a really good job of being accountable. Um, you know, I, I think Chappie, like many of our players, have have processed all this that's gone on. Um, you know, it's been a lot. Um, but, you know, I think our guys, you know, are very accountable in in – the way they perform and the way they pitch or play or whatever it may be. And, and I think that's not surprising to see uh, Aroldis taking accountability despite, you know, what's probably a little bit gray for, and, and a little bit of a question in a lot of people's minds. Okay. Thanks, everyone. We'll have uh, Garrett here about one fifteen.